What's up you guys? We're going to do reverse strings. So we're going to complete the solution so that it reverses the string passed into it. So we get world and we want to we want to start from the end and build a new string. So D L R O W. So let's see how this might work. Let's let's walk through this example and see how we can make a some pseudocode and then translate that to Python. Whoa. What's going on there? Okay, what? Hold on. There we go. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. So this is gonna be the answer. And so we're gonna loop over, we'll have a pointer. It's gonna start at the end and we'll have a new string. And it's gonna start at zero. Our index is gonna go zero, one, two, three, four. And so we're going to start at four and we're going to add each character to our new string starting from the back. So we'll start it at four and we'll add that. Then we'll decrease our pointer. We'll be at three. Now we'll add the character there. So we'll add L, decrease again. Now we add R, decrease again. Now we add O, decrease again. And now we add W. And so that should give us that should give us the expected solution. So now let's, we saw how it would work like picture wise, like if we were like, if we had Legos or something and we were doing this, let's try and come up with some pseudocode to describe what's happening here. So we'll say function um, reverse string. It will take a string, take S, which is a string, and it's gonna return a string too. Okay, so what are we gonna do? We'll say, we'll start with our new empty string, which we're gonna return. So we'll return our new string, and we have to build it in the meantime. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna create a pointer that starts at the end of the string and goes to the first index of the string. So we'll say for i in range, and now we have to think about how do we, how do we start from the end and go to the first element. So I'm going to go like this too. I'm going to say n equals the length of the string to make it a little easier to read. I'm going to say we're going to go from n minus 1 to negative 1 down to, well, okay, so let's do in pseudocode. So this will be our Python. We'll come back to this. Okay, so in pseudocode we'll say um, for for index starting at last element stopping at first. What are we gonna do? We're gonna say new string. Let's delete this guy. Okay, so we'll say new string equals new string plus our string for that index or the character at that index. And so what what is that going to do? So i is going to start here. So let's walk through with our code here. So we'll say for index starting at last element. So the last element is d or 4 here. Stopping at the first. So we're going to stop at 0 or w. We're going to say new string is new string plus the character at that index. And we grab it by you know referencing that that index. Um, because strings are represented represented as a character array or a character list. So when we say S0, it'll give us the first character, or S4 for world, it'll give us D. Okay, so let's turn this into Python. So we're going to use some of this here. I got a bit ahead of myself. So, okay, so it's called solution. We'll say solution. It's going to take S, we'll call it a string and it's going to return a string. So we'll start with n. We'll also define our new string equals empty string. And we're going to return the new string once we've once we've updated it. And so now we have to think about how do we how do we do this? What we said here in English, how do we do that with Python? So let's look at right, so let's write uh, solution.py. Let's look at the documentation for the range function. Okay, so we'll quit this. Okay, so vim solution.py. 
and we're going to pull up the documentation for the range function. Okay, so it can take either one argument, which is what we normally do, or it can take three arguments. And so in this case, we're going to give it three arguments, and let me move my head. <laughs> okay, there we go. So we're going to give it three arguments. Our start is going to be the last element's index, which is the length of the string minus one. Our stop is going to be uh, the first element of the index. And our step is, is we start at n minus one, and what's our, next, our second step going to be? Is it going to be n minus two? Is it going to be n minus three? And so that's, that's how, how are we decrementing from n minus one? So in our case, we want to reduce by one. So we'll do negative one for step. We'll do n minus one to first start and stop, which is, so let's read this. Return an object that produces a sequence of integers from start inclusive, meaning when we say start at n minus one, it will, our index will equal n minus one. To stop exclusive, which means if we say stop equals zero, it's going, it will never equal, our index will never equal zero. So we have to say stop is negative one. And so it'll, it'll reach one and then it will decrement by one to zero. And because zero is greater than negative one, it's gonna include index equals zero in this range function. Okay, so let's keep reading. So return an object that produces a sequences, sequence of integers from start to stop. Um, okay, so range ij produces, okay, so let's, let's see an example. So let's, let's say, let's go like this, list range Let's do from 10. Let's try and let's try and print out 10 to 0. So 10. So let's see what happens if we do 0 as our stop. So remember the first argument is start, second argument is stop, third argument is step. So now think about what you're going to see when we print this and then compare it to what we actually see. So okay. So we're missing 0. We don't include 0 here. So how do we get 0? We have to go like this. Okay, so now we've gotten zero. And, and how do we do that? By, by going one beyond the value we want to stop at. Because this is exclusive and this is inclusive. So keep this in mind. Um, you know, do, some, do some examples to convince yourself in the terminal like this. So you could do range you know, 20. How are we going to get 20 to zero? Let's check. Okay, so we see if our, if our stop is zero, we don't get zero as our last value. But if our stop is negative one, then we get zero. So do a few more examples if you're not sure about this. Okay, so let's go back to this. So we're gonna start, where do we wanna start? We wanna start at the last element right here, at D or four in, in the case of world. And how do we get that value? It's it's the length of the input string, n minus one. So in the case of world, the length of the string is one, two, three, four, five, minus one is four. So this, for world, this will be four, is our first value of, let's call this index. Our first value of index will be four. Our last value will be zero, because this is exclusive, and our step is gonna be negative one. Okay, so what are we gonna do when we get each index value? We're gonna add that to our new string. So we're going to say new string equals new string plus the character at index. And so let's now let's walk through this example with our with our Python code to make sure that it's working. So we're going to start um, s equals s equals world. Let's just go like this to make it clear. Let's go like that, and we're going to start at four. So s equals world and n in this case n is going to equal five okay uh yes n equals five okay so what are we going to do new string is empty and let's you know, i'm using a shortcut shorthand for index i'm calling this i it's a little bit easier okay so 
uh, in this case, index equals four. So what are we going to do? We're going to say new string. We're going to append D. Okay, now I, I or index is going to be three. And so what are we going to do here? We're going to take our value of new string and we're going to append L. And now what are we going to do here? Index is now two. Index is now two. And we're going to append R to our previous value. Okay, we're, we're going to keep going. Index is now one. So we're going to append zero or O. Index is now zero. So we append W and we get the expected result. So let's, so our logic seems sound. Maybe we made some syntax errors or something. So let's double check those by running this. Okay, so let's, let's see what happens. Okay, there you go, guys. So let's, uh, let's double check the answers. You don't, you don't have to double check the answers when you get it right. Um, it's very, make sure you, you check the answers when you get it wrong or you're unsure. Uh, so we're gonna skip, we're gonna skip the one line ones. That doesn't really help us. Uh, okay, so we see, how do they do it here? X equals string letter. Okay, so they're using this letter in this, in this code here is equal to our index. So it's, they're just doing it a little bit different, but same idea. So they're starting letter at the last index value they're uh, they're appending each string to the output string. They even call it the same variable, new string. There you go. So so same idea happening here with the code that we did. All right, guys, stay tuned for the next one.